Have you ever had a conflict with someone at work who differed in opinion from you, but they were determined to argue? And has that left you wondering, how do I be professional? How do I handle that? Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you three very practical tips on how to handle confrontations, have that tough conversation so that you can be professional, but at the same time, create a win-win scenario. And at the end of it, you'll have the confidence and the belief in yourself and a completely different approach to these tough conversations. So the first thing is to realize when I'm talking about confrontational conversations, anytime you say a conversation has been confrontational or somebody is confrontational in front of me, the word confrontational itself, that description is really a projection of a label. Here's what I mean by that. Every single individual in a conversation, you, your colleagues, your supervisor, right, your higher ups as well, everybody in that conversation without exclusions of it, everybody has their own sets of value. Right? What you value may be different from what your supervisor values and vice versa from how, what your higher ups value are different from each other and what they value is different from you. And so as a result, everybody's own systems of value, what's most important to them is like a fingerprint, a unique fingerprint. And anytime we're in a conversation, no matter what type of conversation it is or no matter who is in the room in that conversation, the only thing that each individual cares about is helping themselves fulfill what's important to them. That's the only thing they care about. So when it comes to a label we project that this person or this conversation has been confrontational, the reason why we say that is because when somebody is conversing with you and the things that they're saying, the things that they're presenting are supporting you and supporting your values and supporting what's important to you, then naturally, you know, you tend to label them as being supportive, as cooperative, as that was a pleasant experience. However, the opposite is also true. In a conversation when there are individuals who say things that challenge you, who say things that have a different perspective, different opinions, or maybe even oppose what you are suggesting, then naturally we label that person or maybe that conversation as confrontational, right? So that's the first thing I want to bring to your attention is having that awareness, which is which leads me to this first step, right? Step number one, I'm going to share three steps. So step number one, very practical step on how to handle these confrontational conversations. Step number one is to calm the rage. In the moment where we label that conversation or that individual as confrontational, we're at the height of our emotional state. We might feel offended, we might feel like they were insulted, we might feel belittled, patronized, whatever it ha- whatever have you. And if you were to respond in the height of the moment, in the height of emotions, this is where we have what I call the zone of regret. The zone of regret. And what that means is that tendencies, our tendency at to respond at the height of those negative emotions when we project that label of confrontation, we tend to generally say things we might regret later on. We tend to say things that don't appear as who we normally would be or don't appear as rationally thought out as we would like to them to have been. So this is the zone of regret. So that's why it's important to step number one to really calm the emotions. And this is where you want to take a step back and really to look at what was the actual cause of the argument? What was the actual thing that initiated? What was the actual argument from the other side? And when you take a step back, this is also important as well, knowing what what, what initiated it, what was the actual initiator of it. Chances are you will find that nine times out of 10, it's not that they were, it was a personal attack. It was not that they were trying to keep you down or trying or or deliberately rejecting your ideas. There was some sort of initiator. What was that drive? What was it? And at the same time, this is your opportunity as you're taking that step back, looking at the bigger picture of the conversation. This is also your opportunity to see, okay, obviously the other person has differences and opinions, and this is expected because nobody will have the same values as you. So this is your opportunity to look at, okay, what how has this challenge? How can I grow from this challenge? How is this challenge helping me? How is this challenge actually supporting me? How is this challenge beneficial to me? For example, has it allowed you to be more independent from your supervisors? Has it allowed you to be able to articulate more clearly your ideas? Has it given you opportunities to really to really be solid and grounded in what you believe in? So what have, what have been the supports to you after all? Because in the moment that this is occurring, we have a tendency to immediately 
project that label of confrontational. And that's when we see all the challenges without the supports of that conversation. So that's step number one, very practical, is to remove the charge, to take a step back, looking at the big picture of it. So in that first step, in step number one, this is asking yourself some questions, having the courage and the care to ask yourself some questions to understand what your involvement was in this, what initiated the argument and the purpose of that initiation. So now we, we move to step number two. The second step of handling confrontations, having these tough conversations in a very professional way, the second step is to refocus your conditions. What do I mean by that? Now, unconsciously, we set these conditions on what it means to have a productive conversation. For example, a condition that we often unconsciously set is that there must be complete agreement. There must be a 100% buy-in to my side. They must see things from my perspectives or they've got to respect me for my opinions or give me the floor or hear me out. These are conditions that we put. So this is important to now take when you're taking a step back and having an inventory. Ask yourself, what are these unconscious conditions that I set for myself for this conversation to happen. And then as you are refocusing your conditions, the key is to go back to the principle I shared in step number one. And the principle, if you missed it, I'll repeat it right now, the principle is that every individual in a conversation, the one thing that they are committed to, the one thing that can be guaranteed that they're going to work towards is fulfilling their own values because your system of values, the core values that an individual has is a fingerprint, it is unique to each person. What you value, everything that you value in your systems of value is unique to you and your conversationers, your audience will not have the same values as you. So while you are labeling and projecting labels of confrontational, when things challenge your values, the same thing is happening on the reverse your audience, your higher ups, supervisors, managers, whoever is in conversation with you, they too are labeling things, the challenges to their values as confrontational or unsupportive or maybe even oppositional. So the key to refocusing your condition is instead of expecting them to live according to your values, that is futile and that's not going to happen. The other converse is not going to happen in futile as well. You can't expect yourself to live in accordance to what they value because your values are what's true to you. Their values are, is what true to, it's what's true to them. So refocusing the conditions is going on to, to their side of the table because this is your ownership of, okay, what is my contribution to this confrontation? What is my contribution to this conflict? So you can only control one thing, and, or two things. You can control two things. You control your perspectives and you can control your actions. Those are the only two things you have control of, your own perspectives and your own actions. So refocusing the conditions now is that you choose to have this perspective that I shared in step number one, and then in this step, number two, refocus the conditions means to go on their side of the table and to understand what is important to them, what are they dedicated towards, what are their systems of values, and helping them to see how all of this, your suggestions, your ideas, your recommendations, whatever it is you're sharing in this conversation, how is it going to help them to fulfill what's important to them? Right. And so if you are getting this, the principles of human behavior, the principles of why conflicts occur, and conflicts are unavoidable, but the word confrontational, that's a projection, a label projection. So if you're getting this and you're seeing this, but at the same time, maybe you're thinking to yourself, well, my situation has a lot more nuances. My situation is a lot more complex. If that's how you're feeling and you want some feedback and you want some guidance, then I invite you to work with me as your coach as your executive coach. And if you are serious about creating this result in your career path and in your communications, then I invite you to click the link below this video. In the descriptions, there's the first link there is an application for you to apply to work with me as your direct coach. And this is where I'll show you how to communicate effectively, how to navigate through all the nuances in your particular situation, and how to be able to leverage these human behavior principles so that you can be professional and create win-win situations and be of your highest service and your highest potential. So if that's you, click the link below and I look forward to seeing you on the inside. So now once you have completed step number two, you will have a point of view, you can uncover the roadblocks that are preventing them from seeing your per point of view. You can also understand what their perspectives are that are preventing as, uh, presenting as roadblocks that are, uh, that are preventing them from accepting your point of view. And then you move to step number three. 
And the third step, the final step, is to reconstruct your course. So what do I mean by that? Reconstructing your course is where you are creating a sustainable path forward, where both of you, both sides, are having your values met. You, your, you are being authentic to what is important to you, what you're dedicated towards, and you understand the perspectives of your audience members, what's important to them, what do they value, what are they dedicated towards. And there's a collaborative effort towards some common objective that is meaningful. Now, a collaborative effort towards a common objective does not necessarily mean that you might be working together on a project, or it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to join forces. It does not necessarily mean that. It could just mean that you create a valuable outcome, a meaningful outcome from just from this conversation. But it could also mean, of course, that there is a collaboration, that there is a moving forward. And if there is a moving forward and a collaboration, this is where it's important to continuous be able, continuously be able to communicate in accordance to what they value most, where you can show and demonstrate that your perspectives, what your recommendations are, the actions we're taking in this collaboration moving forward, that it's going to help you achieve what's important to you, it's going to help them achieve what's important to them, and understand also those two principles that I shared before as well. Right, so this was going to create a new, a brand new course starting from your perspective shift on what is a confrontational conversation is going to create a brand new course moving forward and a very meaningful relationship, meaningful conversations where both of you are having benefits from it, but understanding from the outside, right from the outset, that the values are not going to be the same. And it's not about changing someone else's values or changing your own values. It's about finding that meaningful objective on, in the middle and honoring and respecting each other's values. So if you have found this helpful, give me a thumbs up if this topic for you is something that you've been thinking about and really going through lately give me a thumbs up and also give me a comment below as well I want to hear from you what is the most recent co conflict that you had with your colleagues because I want to make sure that I'm producing content that you want to hear content that is helping you empowering you and inspiring you as well and I have one last thing if you are talking and you are trying to take notes from this and you want to implement this in your career path in front of your higher ups or your teams and you're wondering well how do i how do i bring this up assertively how do i communicate assertively right then i have a video that i created recently so the video is going to be either on this corner or this corner i always forget which corner it's going to be but just on one of these corners on the top of the screen there's going to be a link to one of my videos that talks about how can you be assertive in situations like this so that when you are articulating your ideas, articulating your perspectives, that you can be assertive and not passive and not overly aggressive as well. So go to that video that's coming up right next and I'll see you there.